right, we'll start with an opening prayer. Thank you, Lord, for these few minutes to discuss these ideas. May they lead to more fulfilling lives for ourselves, other aspects of ourselves that we're learning about. And this fulfillment hopefully will spill over the love that we feel to those dear to us in our hearts and minds. Now, harm free. In the name of Jesus, amen. We are continuing with Seth Speaks tonight. We have completed the main book. We're in the appendix, and we're into the first ESP class session that uh, was dictated on June 23rd, 1970. It goes like this. If you want organization, then you shall have it at any time. You structure your own existence and you choose those realities that have exactly as much organization as you need at any given time. In this reality, you very nicely emphasize all the similarities which bind you together. You make a pattern of them and you very nicely ignore all the dissimilarities. Out of a vast field of perception, you choose to focus your attention upon certain specific areas and to ignore all others. And so there is perfect agreement among you as far as this small area is concerned. The vastness that you do not perceive does not bother you at all. And you do not ask questions about it. And yet, it exists. I have said this before, if you are able to focus your attention upon the dissimilarities, merely those that you can perceive but do not, then you would be amazed that mankind can form any idea of an organized reality. I look now between the two of you. When the others look at our friends here on the fancy blue couch, they see a picture of true organization. There is an individual there, and an individual there, with space between. The picture is equalized. It appears perfect and organized. However, the space between our two friends is not vacant. You think of it as vacant because you do not perceive what is there. The picture appears to be very organized. As soon as you realize that the picture is not complete, however, then you must begin to ask new questions. And the old idea of the perfect organization is gone. As you know, you do not perceive the atoms and molecules that swim about the room nor those that fill the space between our two friends, nor the forces, the field forces, that exist. The couch serves to unite them since they sit upon it, and what do they sit upon? Emptiness, that you perceive as solidity. Now, without your particular physical senses, you would not perceive the couch as solid. Consciousness that has different perceptive mechanisms than your own is unaware of our now famous blue couch. You make the organization. Your thoughts perceive an organization. You enforce the organization and indeed create it. So a class member asks, do we all create the same organization and see the same couch? And Seth said, You each generally agree, I am sure, that you sit upon a couch. You do not perceive the same couch. You only perceive your own idea constructions. You cannot see those of another. Telepathically, you transpose your ideas in line with what you know of as the other person's thinking. You agree that the couch is there. Now it is true that within your physical system, for I know this will come next, you can measure the couch. I expect at any moment that someone will get a ruler and measure it. 
and then say to me that the couch is so long, how can I say it is not one couch? However, within your physical system, the instruments themselves are distorted. And of course they will agree with what they measure. There's no reason why they should not. Telepathically, you all agree on the placement of objects and their dimensions. You use atoms and molecules in a strange way. You transpose your ideas upon them. You perceive them in a certain fashion. I am not blaming you. I have done it too in my time, and there is good reason for it. But the fact is that physical matter is not solid, except when you believe that it is. And that organization is transposed from within upon the without. It is not transposed from the without upon you. You form the reality that you know. And even though the table holds up your arms, and you may lean upon it and write, I still tell you that the table is not solid. This makes little difference as long as you can write upon it. It makes little difference as long as you can sit upon your blue couch. But when you leave your physical system and when physical perception is no longer the rule, then you must learn new root assumptions. Root assumptions are those laws upon which you agree in any system of reality. You agree, for example, upon what objects are physical. It makes little difference whether they are or not, as long as you agree upon this. Your consciousness belongs in a body. You would not be caught dead with your consciousness outside of your body. It is taboo. Now, the fact is that your consciousness is not imprisoned within your body. But as long as you believe that it is, again, you will not be caught dead outside of it. And when you are caught dead outside of it, there will be some amazement indeed. There are other root assumptions that you take as a basis of reality. And in other levels of reality, there are other root assumptions. These are the seeming laws by which you govern your experiences. Our note takers are doing very well considering that the paper is not solid and neither are their pens. It is amazing what you can do with nothing. You are truly multi-dimensional personalities as I have said before. At some point in your development you will become more and more aware of the true nature of your identity. There is, for example, a part of you who is very aware of the pulsations you have just been discussing and who is aware of the pulse-like nature of memory. When the pulse is in this physical reality, then you, as you know yourselves, have memory of this existence. When the pulse is in another dimension, there is a memory of that existence. Now, a portion of your entire identity has memory of both. The entire personality structure dwells in many dimensions and simultaneously. You, at the, you are at the very beginning of any idea of psychology. You simply do not realize what you are now. And as I've said before, when you ask me questions about life after death, you automatically transpose, if you will forgive me, this lack of knowledge into the next realm. Therefore, sometimes I am at a loss to answer your questions. You are learning to know yourselves at the rate you are going, it will take you some time. Now, when you properly understand how to use psychological time, then to some extent you can learn to alter the nature and focus of your consciousness. You can turn it in many directions. You can focus it in other ways, away from physical reality. 
This does not mean that you will be left high and dry here. It does mean that you will begin to explore the reality of yourselves and of those other dimensions in which you have your existence. There must be, however, a willingness to admit that there are other dimensions in which you exist. You must also have faith in your physical self. Faith that it will be here when you get back. And I assure you that it will. There is no other way, and I repeat this, there is no other way of getting first-hand information about other realities except by exploration and manipulation of your own consciousness. Now, when I speak to you, I very seldom use words such as love. I do not tell you that a God is waiting for you on the other side of a golden door. I do not reassure you by telling you that when you are dead, God will be waiting for you in all his majestic mercy, and that there will be the end of your responsibility. And so, as I said last evening, in my latest chapter, I offer no hope for the lazy, for they will not find eternal rest. However, through traveling within yourselves, you will discover the unity of your consciousness with other consciousnesses. You will discover the multidimensional love and energy that gives consciousness to all things. This will not lead you to want to rest upon the proverbial blessed bosom, it will instead inspire you to take a better hand in the job of creation. And that feeling of divine presence you will find indeed. And feel indeed. For you will sense it behind the dance of the molecules. And in yourselves. And in your neighbors. What so many want is a God who walks down the street and says, Happy Sunday, I am I. Follow me. But God is hidden craftily in his creations so that he is what they are and they are what he is. And in knowing them, you know him. Now, there are many words for psychological time. I do not mean my method of meditation alone. I do mean subjective activity on your part and exploration. Do you follow me? I'm glad. Actually, you are with God now. It is you who do not realize this. You see... You have believed many tales, and symbolically, they were very important. As was mentioned earlier, they have their place in your lives and your development. But there are times when you must leave them behind, and you may feel lonesome for a while without them. Yes, even though someone like myself will come along and take off the comfort blankets, for after a while, they hamper your development, where earlier they helped you grow. The fact remains, however, you do not have to die to find God. All that is, is now. And you are a part of all that is, now. As I have told you often, you are a spirit now. The avenues for development are open now. You can now set out to explore environments that are not physical, if you want to. But I do not see any rush of students at that invisible door. Now I'm going to close our session, but I would like you all to read carefully a copy of what I have said. 
And now and then, when you have nothing else to do, nothing better to do, then try. Try to sense that lapse in the pulsation of your consciousness. Try to leap that gap. I bid you all good evening. Okay. Well, I can see the reason they included this session. Basically, Seth was making a direct appeal to all of his readers and listeners and his students to realize that God is within us right now and that it is our perception and our beliefs that we need to change in order to experience that. And that we have the capability to do that right now. However, like he says, he doesn't see a big rush for people to stop and do that right now. It's always something that we'll do in a while, in a little bit, a little bit later. It's interesting, okay, yeah, that's great. I'll do that tonight. I'll do that next week. Maybe I'll do that when I'm falling asleep. Well, he says, reread this information, pay attention to it, learn it, and use your own self, your own explorations to get a glimpse of your other probable selves that live in other dimensions right now simultaneously. I guarantee you that you can get help from these other aspects of yourself. And what's really neat is you can help other parts of yourself too. You can all these different parts of yourself can learn to grow together. Well, the explorations are going to be different, unique for all of us. However, the tales that we bring back, the visions, the dreams, the intuitions, the insights, maybe the poetry, maybe something transformed into sculptures or objects or events, maybe music, dances, whatever it is that we do to translate this inner knowledge, we can give to each other. We can give to ourselves as we are creative. And we'll find that as we explore our own reality, we are touching God. We are feeling God, and God is feeling us. God is experiencing life through us. So, tonight's session, we could come up with a sentence that says, God experiences life through my actions. And I know that's very bold, but I think it's time that we turn the tables and learn that we are responsible for what we do. God experiences life through my actions. We need to start paying attention to what we think and what we do. It's important. Today's date is September 3rd, 2015. God experiences life through my actions. We'll have a closing prayer. Thank you for these few minutes. May this help almost form a completion to our understanding of all of this information and help us transcend reality every day. We do it when we go to sleep. Help us be conscious during that period, at least to get a glimpse of that wonderful rush feeling when we make the change. May this happen all harm free now in the name of Jesus, amen. All right. Let's hope that's still recording, and it is. Yay!